it's Mary. I hope that you are doing well. Thank you so much for joining me here today where it is April and April is National Poetry Month. So this month we are going to do some creating with poetry and creating of poetry. And because many of us like to listen to poetry or read poetry, but we're a little intimidated about creating poetry, I thought we'd start today with creating poetry. And we're going to do that in a pretty stress-free way. Before we get started, I will just share a couple thoughts I have on the poetry creation process. So I like to get into a creative frame of mind before I start creating poetry or anything really. So what I often do is I'll listen to music or watch a movie musical before I start creating something just to get into that creative frame of mind and into the rhythm of words rhyming and when creating poetry I mostly focus on creating sentences or even just phrases that are rhythmic or repeat or where words or phrases repeat. So here is what we'll use for our poetry creating today. So I used magnetic poetry kits as kind of my inspiration for this. So instead of using magnetic strips with words on them, we're going to create paper strips with words on them. So uh, we use a pair of scissors, a jar, or something to put your paper strips of words into. I've got a pen, and what I did was I just used index cards, and I cut them into one inch strips. So then I just go to every other line and cut the index cards into strips that are basically two lines wide. And I'll use those to write my words on them and then I'll put them in the jar here. So you can choose the words for your strips of paper in any way you want. And I just write one word per slip of paper. And they can be words that stand out to you in conversations or while you're reading. I keep a reading journal and part of that I write down sentences or quotes from the book that stand out to me. And so what I did to create my strips of paper was I just took those sentences and I wrote one word from those sentences on every slip of paper. And then I put them into the jar. So to create my poetry, I pull one, I pull slips from the jar one at a time and create poems with them. And I'm pretty low key, so if I'm not inspired by a word like I pulled at, I'll just put that to the side. And with the words that I'm like or they inspire me, I put them in the middle. So I put time there. So you can set up whatever parameters you want for your poems. Uh, whether you could limit the amount of slips you can pull for the jar or you can decide if you have to use all the, the words you pull or if you only need to use some of them. And we're going to create a poem here together. I'm pulling the words one at a time from the jar. And I just build the poems toward the center of my workspace. And right now, I'm not all that inspired by the words I'm getting. So I'm just going to keep pulling. We'll keep going and see what we get.
If I pull several, I just put all of them back in except one. And I don't look at them while I'm doing that. Ooh, so I've got time in painting and I like that. Let's see what else we can get. And sometimes it takes me quite a while. And I also like to kind of try to arrange the words over here into how I would use them in the sentence. All right, I have come up with a poem I like. So what I do at this point is lay it out on the paper in a way that I like. And does this need to make sense to everybody? No, it just has to be something that you like. So I'm just showing you my poem, and this is what I have. Time painting demands you own nothing. And I like the way this came out with the paper for the background. So once you have finished your poem and you have one that you like, there's a few things you can do. You can photograph them on the paper like I did, or you can draw them onto a page with a fancy border. Um, I did do a few more, so I will share those with you as well. So here is one, I like to call this poem, This Root. And what I did was, I asked myself a few things. I asked myself what I liked about the poem. And basically it just says, This root, wild, real, known, planted by you, idea of the mind in time, season, the world, always. And what I liked about that one was the idea 
of a plant being planted and then going basically where it wanted to. So having freedom. So I wanted an image that expresses freedom and the ability of the plant to go wherever it wants. So I chose the vine border and it was just black and white so I grabbed some markers and colored in the leaves. So I've got that one. I did one that I call Then Be Nothing. And with Then Be Nothing, I just wanted to express the limitless quality of thought. It just says, Then Be Nothing Falling Wherever. And I thought the picture of the ever-expanding universe was a good backdrop from that one, so I chose that image to go with it. And then my last one is called Weeds. And I couldn't find a weed image that I liked, so I used grass. It just says weeds planted like memories. And I wanted to show the idea that memories just grow and expand. And so with the quantity of grass that was there, I felt like that could express the quantity of memories. So that's what I came up with for those. And those are all poems that I created for my jar of words. And I actually plan to just leave this sitting on my desk and as I think of other words, I can add them to the jar and create more and more poems. So I hope this piques your interest in writing poetry and that you create your own jar of words and use that jar of words to create poetry. Thank you so much for joining me today. We'll be back very soon with another Create with Poetry project. Until then, I hope that you continue to use your creativity to improve your world. And thank you.